Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome you all here this afternoon, and I'm glad to see so many of you got out on this really cold, threatening day. Uh, this afternoon, we're going, I'm going to talk about the history of Santa Claus. Now, uh, who is Santa Claus? Why do we call him Santa Claus? And where did he ever come from? Santa has a long and colorful past which started in Turkey 1,700 years ago. In the heart of the Roman Empire, in the town of Patera, a boy was born to wealthy parents. They named him Nicholas. He was a precocious child and very holy. He, be he became the Bishop of Myra at the young age of 30. He was a writer of wrongs and a protector of the innocents. Legend tells us that he took some of his family's wealth and gave it to young girls who had no dowries. It is, it is said he threw the gold through the windows and it landed in the stockings of the girls as they hung on the fireplace to dry. He was known for late night anonymous gifts and granting of wishes, which like, well, just like Santa Claus does today. His greatest fame was patron saint of children. Three students on their way to school one day were kidnapped and dismembered by an evil innkeeper and their bodies placed in pickle, pickle barrels. Saint Nicholas appeared and commanded the boys to arise. Miraculously, they emerged intact. Saint Nicholas died December the 6th, 343. <coughs> In 1082, during the Crusades, his body was taken to Italy by a band of sailors. Stories of St. Nicholas were carried around the world, and they became mixed in with stories of pagan gods. In Germany, the pagan god Odin flew over the countryside, checking to see if the villagers were taking good care of their land and their animals. A mystical rider flies through the night and judges people if they have been good or bad. Inspired by St. Nicholas's miracles, 12th century fresh nuns, French nuns began distributing candy on December the 6th. Soon it was believed that St. Nicholas himself was delivering the candy to the children. All this attention to a saint disturbed Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, who thought <laughs> the attention should be reserved for God alone so he banned St. Nicholas. Now he was smart enough to know that the people needed something, so he substituted the Chris Kengel, which is the Christ child as the gift giver. This was the baby Jesus as a winged cherub who, was, who flew around and gave gifts to the children. He claimed that Jesus came on his birthday, which was December the 25th, not on St. Nicholas Day. In America, Chris Kendall became Chris Kringle. In many parts of Europe, it wasn't the Christ child who brought the gifts. In England, it was Father Christmas. In France, Père Noël. In Italy, Bafana. She goes from house to house searching for the Christ child and leaving gifts for the children. These traditions continued to be practiced, and neither time nor dogma could lessen their appeal. In Holland, St. Nicholas continued to give gifts, and when the Dutch explorers came to America, they brought St. Nicholas with them. They called him Sinterklaas. After the Revolutionary War, everything English was out of style, so the New York Americans adopted the Dutch past. Washington Irving gave Sinterklaas a prominent place in the Knickerbocker history. He describes in detail the Dutch traditions of St. Nicholas Day. But this Santa Claus, or St. Nicholas, was still thought of as a saint. It took the poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, by Clement Moore, to change him from an austere saint to a jolly elf. We read, when what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, with a little old driver so lively and quick, and I knew in a wink it must be St. Nick. Here we get the names of the reindeer. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, 
Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. Then we get a description of Santa Claus. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. A stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. Many aspects of our modern Santa cast in stone by one little poem that came into national consciousness quite by accident. Mrs. Claus was invented by Catherine Lee Bates, who wrote America the Beautiful. Santa became very popular, and several books were written about him. There were several different versions of the way he looked. It took Thomas Nast to tell America what Santa really looked like. He was the head editorial cartoonist for the Harper's Weekly. With each new rendition, he added elements. We learned that Santa lived in the North Pole. He looked through a telescope down to Earth to see if we've been bad or good. He kept a book on children. And we also got a look at Santa's home life. Now this is one of Thomas Nass's pictures. And it shows Santa Claus as an elf sitting on top of the chimney waiting for the children to go to bed so he could come down the chimney and deliver the gifts. Maybe I should do that that way. This next picture shows him standing in front of a curtain where we're all anticipating what wonderful things might be hidden behind that curtain. And this is probably his most famous picture of Santa Claus where he has the long pipe and he's kind of a fat, jolly little fella. And here it shows that Santa had a telephone at home and you could call Santa and request the things that you wanted for Christmas or talk to him. So Santa is born, son of St. Nicholas, Bowden, Clement Moore, and every child who ever dreamed of him on Christmas Eve. But as the 20th century approached, Santa will not be known just for his generosity, but his salesmanship as well. On Christmas Eve, 1891, President Benjamin Harrison told a newspaper reporter, we shall have an old-fashioned Christmas tree for the children upstairs, and I shall be their Santa myself. Let me hope that my example may be followed by every family in the land. Santa Claus went through one more facelift. In 1930, Coca-Cola asked Hayden Sunbaum to design an ad. Instead of the small gnome-like elf of Thomas Nast, Sandblum produced a tall, round, jolly Santa, a combination of grandfather and a superhero. And this is his. In 1939, Rudolph was born. Invented by a copywriter at Montgomery Ward, a new reindeer with a shiny nose and a gift for navigation. Although this reindeer is shunned and teased by the other reindeer, he saves Christmas with his red nose. And we're all very familiar now. Rudolph has become a part of our Christmas. Santa has become such a big star that St. Nicholas is almost forgotten. Santa protects us from becoming too grown up, from forgetting about the wonder, generosity, and magic of life we celebrate at Christmas. Father Greeley says, Santa is a wonderful story based on the story of God's love for us, our parents' love for us, and the wonders of Christmas time. Christmas morning cookies left out for Santa are gone. The glass of milk is empty. Children around the world open presents left by the midnight visitor. Then thoughts of Santa fade for another year. But come next winter, a new set of lists will be mailed off to the North Pole.
Children will sit again on Santa's lap and whisper into his ear their wishes. They will hope that they, will ha they have been good enough so that Santa will remember them all over again. I want to talk a little bit about the things that we brought today. Now this is kind of our, this is what we all think of Mr. and Mrs. Claus. They look like this today, but they didn't always look like this. And these were these two items set for many years in the Gobble clothing store. And I was able to buy these when Bruce uh, took over the clothing store after he went out of business. Now this is, uh, this is the way St. Nicholas would have looked with his miter and his staff and his long robes. This is Father Christmas, and so the English picked up many of those ideas. He wears the long robe, he carries a scepter, and he, wears a, he now wears a wreath of holly on his head. This is the more Santa Claus as we know Santa Claus today. In certain parts of the country, even in certain parts of one country, like Germany, they sell their Santa Clauses look different. And in one part of Germany, the people that uh, came from Germany to Pennsylvania, especially in the Lancaster area, they brought with them their custom of the bell snickel. <clears throat> now the bell snickel started out as the pelts nickel. And that pelts is a German word for a fur, an animal fur. And so at first he wore an animal fur, and that's, he that's what he was covered with. Then eventually that became the fur that trimmed his robe. And when he came to the United States, he was called the Peltsnickel, but eventually that became changed to the Belsnickel. And it's a custom in that part of, of Pennsylvania where the Belsnickel goes around the night before Christmas on Christmas Eve to check up on the children and to see if they've been good. And the, most of the little children are very afraid of this guy because he's kind of mean. And he comes in the house with candy and switches. And if you've been bad, he chases after you with the switches and sometimes throws the candy on the floor and, and uh, tries to hit the children with the sticks when they go to get the candy. So they have different versions of the way they celebrate uh, Christmas. This little set here uh, has uh, for a while, they, they made, uh, when they first began making things, they made a lot of it out of cloth, like this little Santa here, and they had paper mache or plaster faces. <clears throat> then they made a lot of their sleighs out of wood, and these are reindeer that are uh, uh, celluloid. And this came from uh, Lydia Montgomery's estate. This one right in front is all celluloid. And I've had this for a long time. This came, I didn't know when I got this that I was ever even gonna collect Santa Clauses. I just liked it. I kind of fell into this collecting idea because I couldn't say no to all these things when we went to auctions. And this came from Irene Cook's estate. Then, then they went into plaster, or not plaster, plastic. And this is plastic. You don't get celluloid anymore because it just isn't made because it burns. Now, they also made candy containers, and you can open this up and candy were put in these things. And this is a version of Santa Claus from Germany where he looks more like an elf than he looks like Santa Claus. And he's carrying a feather Christmas tree. And I thought these were kind of interesting because these are made out of corn husk. I brought a couple things that are, I think, are, the newer things are getting more amusing and everything has to move today and be musical. So this shows Santa in his workshop and he's testing his toys and it also is musical and moves. This is a little one. I've never seen another one of these. Maybe you have, but you wind this one. And his eyes move. <laughs> Trouble with them, they take a while to wind down. Now when Santa gets done with all that work and gets home on Christmas night, He's completely worn out and he has to go to bed. So
Okay, now we had some people bring some things today. And um, Jean, would you like to tell about your things that you brought? I brought a couple of things today that I have in uh, my collecting. I'm sort of like uh, Dot, and I go to auctions, and it's hard to say no sometimes. And so sometimes you buy some things that uh, uh, we didn't plan on uh, going to uh, look at. First of all, I brought a notebook of some postcards that everybody's welcome to look at afterwards. Uh, uh, I collect a lot of Fairfield memorabilia and postcards, and these are a lot of these are things that have come along with other purchases. One of the purchases I had this summer was this old Santa Claus, and he's kind of a uh, solemn-looking guy. Dot, you tell us about the. Well, Santa Claus was not a very friendly person when he came. The children were very much afraid of him, and he had a very stern face. It's just been recently that Santa's a smiling character as we know him today. Years ago he had a very stern face and, and a very mean look on him. This does have a composite face on it and I don't know what the date is on it. Uh, uh, I just thought it was an interesting old Santa to put out at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I do have a pastel here. This is a Wilson pastel and I the first name of escapes me from Fairfield. Uh, the, did all the pastels down by the hospital. down by the hospital. Wilson. Anyway, uh, we put this out uh, uh, at Christmas time. I think it's just kind of fun to have a little picture on the wall. It's a, a pastel drawing that was done by a Fairfield artist. I also have a couple of old Santa masks. These go with uh, uniforms. This is a, uh, uh, I have a, a Santa suit that goes along with this, and I bought this years ago at, uh, at an auction. And uh, the suit is kind of ragged, but it's kind of an uh, interesting mask. And then I have another one here, and it's kind of like twine for a beard. And this actually went to what appears to be a child's costume, because this is the coat that went with the costume. So I don't know whether it was used in some sort of a play, or whether it was a, a dress-up costume, or, or whatever it might have used. But it's kind of an interesting thing, and uh, had a paper mache hat. And Dot tells me that the old collectors try to find paper mache whenever they can, or crepe paper, or crepe paper I mean, whenever yeah. they can. So. It's kind of an interesting uh, old uniform. Uh, I can't imagine wearing one of these masks and actually looking like Santa Claus as we know today. Uh, Dot seemed to feel like this looked a little bit Chinese to her, a little bit Oriental. Uh, doesn't really go along with it. And then I did bring along a lot of uh, postcards, and people are welcome to look at the Christmas postcards that I have uh, after, the, after the program. Dot, you have a couple more things. OK, and would you like to tell us, Joe, about your things? Well, I had a large collection, and when I moved from the house to the apartment, I had to get rid of quite a lot of them. This is my favorite Santa. And he has to get ready. Or maybe he's scrubbing afterwards, I'm not sure. And this is his little coat and hat hanging up on it. Isn't that darling? This is. Where did you get that? Um, Ed the florist over there in Atama. The, they have a gift. Hickory House. It Hickory used to House. House. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it. And then this is my oldest Santa. This is a candy container. I got this at um, an antique show at the racetrack in Des Moines. It's nice. Very nice. Would you like to tell us about your little? Go ahead, what I shared with you, Dad. This is a nice porcelain uh, bank. And there was a lot of this put out, I would say, in about the 50s and 60s. And a lot, it all looks alike. It has this interesting trim on it that looks like they took uh, the porcelain and just in little tiny pieces and put it all around here to make it look furry. You'll find salt and pepper shakers, planters, uh, it's sleighs and Santas all made in the same style. And they sold quite a lot of this at the old treasure house when it was here in, in uh, Fairfield. How about, would you like to tell yeah, about yours? Made in, or it says Japan on it, and underneath, look, it says 25 cents. So you could, how long have you had this? Uh, 
my mother got it from her mother's house, and I think it came from my great-grandmother's house. Because do you think he looks a little oriental? Yes. And look at his blue trousers, you know, yeah. and the, the color. That's right. It used to be that, that, that they did have Santa with blue trousers on rather than the red. Uh, if you notice, this one has the blue, too. Whoops. The reindeer. They're very hard. I think the, the um, celluloid shrinks if you keep it in too hot an area, and eventually those legs shrink. But see, he has the blue on him, too, the blue pants. But I love these things that came from Japan in the early 30s and the 40s. They all look a little bit oriental. Of course, during, came from the dime store. during the war, you didn't, we didn't get anything coming in from Japan. But right before the war, so much of this stuff has had oriental look. You spoke of Coca-Cola, Santa Claus. Patty Lynn had hoped to come and bring hers, but she has a Coca-Cola Santa Claus. Oh, she does, yeah. Well, I thank you people for bringing all these nice things to show us. And does anybody have anything they'd like to add to the program this afternoon? Well, thank you all very much for coming.